grace and peace, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend with me. This is Joy. I hope that you are all doing well and taking time to nurture yourself as you continue to journey beyond narcissistic abuse. I want to have this conversation with you, and it's my sincere hope that by the end of this discussion, you will look at yourself in a different way. I would like you to see the strength that lies within you, to know that there is something powerful about you and you possess that power right in your hand, and to know the real truth about the narcissist. You know, many times people hear things about narcissists and we see them in a particular type of way. We become so accustomed to the notion that they're winners in life. And let's face the facts, that is all based on an illusion. And also the word winners in life, it's really subjective, like w winning in what area? Because absolutely they can be winners as far as finances are concerned, if they're successful in business or they have successful careers, but are they winners as far as relationships? It depends, like, I mean, it's subjective, right? But one thing that is so true about them is they operate from a predatory mode, and this gives them the upper hand. Because with them, it's really a case of the left hand really knowing what the right hand is doing, and their targets being left in the complete dark about what is really going on at hand. Because in the beginning of any relationship, the narcissist walks in knowing exactly who they are. And I mean in every relationship, whether this is a, um, a professional relationship, um, one within the four walls of a church, it could be, you know, parents, um, intimate relationships, friends, whatever the relationship is, they know their truth. Now, they may not know that they are uh, narcissists, but they know that there is something about them. But they know, and they know how they operate, and they know that this relationship, this situation, is going to run its cycle, and just like always, because it's not new, it will expire eventually. They know the truth going in, so the target is always at a disadvantage. They know how dirty they play. They know how willing they are far to take things. They know that if we're going to court, they know exactly how they plan on harassing you, how they will deny, 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 project, gaslight, triangulate. They know who's in the in the harem. They know who to use, who to manipulate, which which pawn to move at what time. They've been here before. So they go in with the upper hand and oftentimes the, su the supply or the target just finds themselves bamboozled. And when you're caught so off guard, a lot of the times it feels like you're facing a giant because you, you, you weren't anticipating this. This is somebody you trusted. This is somebody you expected to, to be who they said they were. But you know, the truth is just because somebody is there for you, it doesn't mean that they're there for you. And this is very true when it comes to narcissists. They present this larger than life figure and they have programmed people to see them that way. So everybody in the harem views them that way, even though they may now know the truth about them because they've been through a couple cycles, they fear them or they've been conditioned to be quiet. They simply know what role to play and how to gas the narcissist up and how to make new um, new targets in other people feel, um, you know, how to make them feel inferior or make them feel like, yes, this narcissist is everything. The flying monkeys are there cheering them on, making them feel like, yeah, I'm great. And so when you have all these things working in your favor, it can really look like you are winning. But looks can be deceiving. Their apparent grandiose ego is really, uh, most of the time, larger than life. And this character and their, their charisma really makes them appear to be unstoppable. They just haven't met the stone that is in your hand yet. 
And even with those that are not so grandiose, because not every narc has a grandiose personality, they still give off the image that they are winners in life and they are unstoppable and that karma never catches up with these people. I know, I've seen it so many times. People say, when will the narcissist get their karma? Why are they always winning? And it seems like nobody is willing to call them out for who they are and they are feared and they just continue to torment people. And we get frustrated by seeing all of this. You see their evil, you know their wickedness, and they just seem like giants roaming the earth, doing whatever they want, causing whatever havoc. And when we think about how corporations and systems and governments and institutions work together and cause mass destruction and devastation in many people's lives, they really do seem unstoppable. So I was going through uh, my Bible this morning and came up to first samuel chapter 17 and i encourage you to please go ahead and read this um, passage of scripture for yourself because it really stood out to me and this is where i want to draw our discussion from for today it's the story of david and goliath and the interesting thing is like you know Goliath seems so unstoppable and he he reminded me of the narc very it just appears to be completely unstoppable and here comes David, little shepherd boy, and he goes to talk to Saul and he's telling Saul that, listen, I will go ahead and I will take care. I will go ahead and take care of, of, of this Goliath character. And here goes in chap in verse 33, he says that, or Saul says to David that you are not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him for you are a youth and he is a man of war. How interesting, how many times when we are in these relationships with narcissists, are we, are we gaslit? Are we made to feel like, you know, you're inferior. You don't have the knowledge. You can't do this. You're not educated enough. I mean, from families to, to business, to any area of life, your, your church telling you, you don't have the anointing to take on this assignment. You can't grow. You can't just telling you what you can and you cannot do. But here is what. I want you to know David knew who he was and he was not moved by what Saul said he became even more adamant that like listen let me present my credentials to you because I know who I am and the only way David knew who he was is because he knew who he, be who he belonged to he just knew what he knew and he presented his case and talked about how he had defended his sheep how he had um battled lions and bears and so to him this goliath this narcissist in his face was nothing more than an uncircumcised philistine and he was ready to drag this raggedy dusty narcissist okay and so goliath is dressed for battle he has everything that he needs on and it just made me think of how narcissists are fully prepared to live in their fantasy life every bit of the illusion is is worked out from who's in the harem to the flying monkeys to the their, their toolbox verbal abuse physical abuse um lying gang stalking they have everything in their toolbox just like goliath, goliath had his helmet he had his sword he had everything that he needed to go to battle and saul is looking at david unprepared and how many times are we like that when we face this narcissist we're not prepared for this we're blindsided but david knew you know it's like the mask is slipped he knows we know who we are dealing with and saul offers or presents david with some battle clothes and david is like ah you know this i can't i can't walk in these things i haven't tried them out they don't feel right and he took them off and that's what really stood out to me david took those things off so many times when we are in these relationships or when we deal with narcissists we tend to in the heat of the moment when we are in our feelings when we are upset when we when we feel like you know what i'm so mad that they are not getting what is theirs and we get angry we we see them off in the distance skipping into the sunset with the news supply and their lives just look like everything is perfect and why aren't why aren't they getting what's theirs 
why 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 there's so many questions and there's just no answers for us and it doesn't seem fair sometimes you know we even get caught up in their games we fall for the hovers we we end up you know spying on them ourselves and doing things that represent who they are and it just reminded me of those things when when I saw David say that I cannot walk with these for I have not tested them we cannot walk forward in who we are supposed to be because the ways of the narcissist are not the way that we need to go and so we've got to strip ourselves of everything that is not true to who we are from the false labels the false beliefs the false identities the fear of what was because what was never served us the fear of what life can be without them because our hearts are still attached to them and there's no shame in saying that listen this is somebody I loved and I am having a hard time moving forward because my heart is still there it's all part of the trauma bond and it's all part of the recovery process there's no shame at all in saying these things and until we're truly able to shed off all of the weights until we're able to take off all of the garments all of the battle gear everything because when we're in this relationship it is a battlefield remember your mind is a battlefield your mind is what they fight for and so we've got to take off everything that is in our mind that weighs us down from moving forward and it's once we start to take off what is what is weighing us down we step into the truth of who we are we never can step into the truth of who we are when we are being weighed down with who we are not and so once David took off all of those vestments when David David took off all of those garments he became agile he was able to be moved he was able to move skillfully he was able to be his authentic self he was able to be that skillful warrior he was able to be that ferocious, a ferocious warrior, that fearless warrior who fought in the, in the fields while he took care of his sheep, while he tended to his flock and protected them from lions and bears. There's certain things in your life that you are able to do, you are able to do, you are able to protect, you are able to nurture, you are able to, to enjoy before these narcissists and sometimes you can't even identify those things because you grew up with narcissists but the beauty of life and the beauty of the opportunity to take off these heavy weights these heavy garments is now you get the opportunity to see who you really are you are not who they called you you are not what they define you as you are the limitations that they put on you just like Saul was trying to tell David he's too young and he's not experienced enough to fight this giant this is the same thing they tell us and that you hear these things so often that you believe them but David knew who he was and I want you to now look at what's in your hand evaluate what's in your heart take a look at what's in your mind and sometimes the only way to get to these places is to is to write down how you're feeling is to have that come to Jesus moment is to go to therapy you know never ever be ashamed of what you what path you take to get your healing you know one of the things the Bible tells us or and I can't think of the scripture off by heart um, I'll look it up and add it I'll attach it into the message but you know it says that you know he gave some to be prophets apostles evangelists preachers teachers but for others listen he gave therapists counselors psychologists psychotherapists medication coaches whatever so there is healing in so many forms for you so that you can get to the authentic version of yourself that you won't have to be confused about who you are that you won't have to accept any false label you can walk into the trueness of who you are that when the hover comes back your slingshot the accuracy of your shot and shutting that down will be undeniable there is a stone for every Goliath the stone for these for for the Goliath the stone for the narcissist in your life is you discovering your truth once you know who you are 
every false version of you is so inconsequential you don't even care about that anymore because it's none of your business i mean like they can say what they want to say but okay what's that got to do with me what does that have to do with you you continue to keep on moving and you continue to keep on soaring don't believe the lies the projection but get to know yourself get to know yourself so that you can be sure that what you, you when you start to um, so you can be sure that when you begin to remove the weights this is who you are and you can rest in the comfort of that I encourage you to go ahead and get all of those resources the, co the coaching counseling therapy whatever works for you but I also encourage you to go into the Word of God it is full of healing it is full of truth for you um, today I shared with you from first Samuel chapter 17 and have a look at it and see what it says for you you know one of the most in verse 47 it says then all this assembly shall know that the lord does not save with sword and spear for the battle is the lord's he will give it into our hands Goliath had everything for the battle. It looks like the narcissist has everything to make them successful, to make them win, to cause them to be to be victorious. They didn't. Um, Goliath didn't win, and they cannot win because guess what? It says it right here. The battle is the Lord's, and He will give it into our hands. Do not lose hope and continue to trust in God. I thank you so much for your time. Continue to be good to yourself. God bless you.